It's YouTube Wednesday! Spooky Tree! You need two rolls. Rolls of anti-fatigue mat from Harbor Freight. And uh, one of them, they come almost 24 inches. One of them, I want you to cut down to 18 inches. So I've got uh, 18 inches here. And that's going to be right there. I'm just going to use a knife. You want a fairly smooth cut if you can get one. All right, so there we go. Save this piece. You're going to use it later. And I want to lay out both of these pieces of foam so that they can flatten out a bit. Okay. Now I'll take my heat gun. I'm going to apply heat to this just to flatten it out. Now you can lay these out in the sun and uh, with some weights on it that'll kind of do the same thing, but I want to speed it up. Okay, so now I have my 24 inch strip and I have my 18 inch strip. I want to get the factory edge. You cut one piece of the 18 strip. You cut part of that. That's not a factory edge. That's a U edge. Go to the factory edge. That's going to be straighter. Uh, and I want to glue these two together. Just line up both of your ends. And I'm going to apply glue to uh, both this edge and that edge and let that dry. Contact cement is what I'm using. We're going to let that dry for about five or five minutes until it's no longer glossy to look at. Then we'll press both parts together. I'm going to speed up that process with a heat gun. Note, my super sweet Still Be Studios t-shirt. You could have one like this if you get one from Teespring. Wait, I think it's over there. All I'm doing now is I'm pressing together our uh, two sides. And if they do not immediately bond, then your contact cement is not dry enough. All right? So stop. So now that those two are glued together, and they are glued together well, the next step is to the next step is to flip it, and I'm going to glue this strip that we cut off. Remember, I said save this. We're going to glue this on top of here to help that butt joint just be a little bit stronger. That, that strip's about six inches wide, so you want to put on either side about three inches on either side of the seam you just glued, three inches of glue, and then glue this whole back side. Now this strip, you want to make sure that you go all the way to the edge with it. So even the edges glue down. If it's going to peel up, it's going to peel up from the edges. Think about how that works to stop that from happening. Once again, giving that about five, 10 minutes to dry, I'll speed it up with a heat gun. All right, now it's about lining this strip up and putting it evenly over both halves. I prefer to put it over my shoulder like this, then I can line up one end. So 
So you also need two five gallon buckets for this build. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take the handles off of both of them because I don't need the handles. This bucket is gonna be the base of the tree and I'm gonna run this foam around it and make it into a tube. I just leave the bucket up like this. It's a little wider at this end than it is at this end. It doesn't matter. What I'm doing now is I'm checking to see how much overlap I have. And because I cut that other piece at 18 inches, I'm gonna have a good three inches or so of overlap. I wanna do it at the widest part of the bucket, so there's no issue with it fitting down over that bucket. I'm gonna use a drill. I have a stepper bit on here, but uh, it doesn't matter what kind of drill bit. We're gonna use zip tie, so I go at least a quarter inch or so with your uh, holes. And I'm just folding them over. I have that three inches of overlap, so I'm just gonna go about an inch and a half in on each side. I'm gonna do two holes. I'm gonna go down about a foot. I'm gonna do it again. Inch and a half. Two holes. Another foot. Inch and a half. Two holes. Okay, now I'm going to zip tie this together in a tube. The middle will be the hardest spot to reach. I'm going to do the middle first. My holes are big enough to fit the zip tie head through, so I'm just feeding the zip tie through both underneath and then feeding them through the top. I ran out of ceiling. So now it has a nice shaft for my tree. Now you can add weight in that five gallon bucket, uh, maybe a gallon of water, maybe a cinder block, maybe a fog machine. Anything to add weight will help it stand up a little bit. Okay. All right, and I want to put the seam in the very back. And now I want to draw a face on this, just like it were a jack-o'-lantern. I'll make a note. These are going to be six foot tall trees. If you want a nine foot tall tree, you need one more roll 
of the EVA foam and you're going to cut it in half and then cut a 24 inch strip out of one side and an 18 inch strip out of the other side and you just butt joint glue that onto the end and you'll have a strip left over to glue it this way and you'll have a nine foot tall tree. Uh, the seam does not bother me in the least. That's going to hide in just a minute. If you wanted to, you could use spray foam and make a face on this, but I don't bother. So I put down some plastic. We're going to make some limbs for our tree. All right, I have plastic. I have water. I am misting this down really well with water. Adding moisture to that. And I have Loctite foam. This is gaps and cracks, Loctite foam. Gaps and cracks, Loctite foam. You can do this with great stuff. I prefer Loctite. It's a little more dense. I want to make a T-shape over here, and this is where my branch is going to be. So do these one line at a time. See, and that's that's one branch and part of the, the trunk of the tree. See, I'm just going to be building this up. I'm not worried about getting the full thickness at once. Every three or four, you want to mist that with water. I don't want to trap any without any uh, access to moisture. Now a few that don't go all the way, but I want to reinforce that turn. They're going just past the elbow of the tree. Well, this one is getting firm enough for me to shape, I'm going to do the other one. All right, so you can see that now this is puffed up quite a bit. and. Uh, I actually want to control that a little bit. I want to squeeze these down. That's going to make the foam more dense. And I'm going to actually squeeze some ridges into the length of this. And that'll give it more strength too. It'll hold more weight. I also want to start lifting, lifting it from the plastic so that I can get it to be uh, a little more round. Right now it's very flat on the back side. And again, I'm going to run just some ridges that will help strengthen this and help it hold its own weight. Let's go ahead. I'm going to lay this somewhere. Let me see how noodly it is right now. I'm going to lay this somewhere so it's not just flat. Uh, you know, I want it to have a bit of shape to it and a bit of three dimensionality. On the end that goes up against the tree, I want this side to be flat. So I'm flattening that out. While I'm trying to round out all this side, I'm flattening out this end. So it's got to go up against the tree. Go. 
Oh. Okay. Let these cure for another 15, 20 minutes before I mess with putting them on the tree. My second bucket. Uh, I have need of a second bucket. Um, and I'm going to insert this bucket inside of the tree. I'm going to cut out the bottom of the bucket. And then uh, I'm going to insert it in there so we have something solid to attach those arms to. Okay? And now the top ring of the bucket needs to go, leaving me with a bucket-like sleeve. I also cut off the little hips that held on the uh, handle because those would bulge out a little bit. I'm going to install the bucket right below the mouth. I'm just going to drill some holes. Since I have the holes for one zip tie already drilled, I'm going to put in that zip tie. I now have a bucket tube suspended inside of my tree. Uh, and that actually gives him a lot of rigidity this way, so I can attach those arms, branches, whatever you want to call them. And the reason why I zip tied him up the back like that is when Halloween is over, you just cut the zip ties and he opens up flat, very easy to store. And you've got two buckets to put anything else in, you know what I mean? Well, one bucket, one bucket has, but you could put it in the other bucket and then you have a taller bucket. I'm gonna grab a marker. Gotta look at where my bucket is. And I just marked out where that will go and where the top of the bucket is. Drill some holes to run some zip ties through. You can use the normal 11 inch zip ties. I have 24 inch zip ties. If you just attach a few together, you can use the 11s if you don't want to buy the 24s. Okay, I think his right arm is too low. Uh, so the easiest way to fix that is to reposition the foam. The foam is already dried, it's cured, it's hard. With a heat gun, I can soften it, reshape it, and then uh, it'll go in the position that I want. That's a better spread and a better shape for this arm, I think. Let that cool down, it'll hold that shape. One more part to make with your leftover uh, Loctite foam. These are gonna be some roots that just go down to the base of the tree, and they're pretty much optional.
You can do three or four roots. I'm doing three this time. Okay, so uh, my roots have kind of formed here. I've given them eight minutes, and now they have a good skin. And uh, I just want to, like I did with the branches, I want to put in some runners here, make them look nice and rooty. This one's still a little sticky on the bottom, so I'll let it wait a bit before I do final tweaking. What you do want to do is find a way to prop them up, because they're going to attach to the bottom of the tree. All that will be treated this way, I'll worry about attaching them and stuff later. Our tree does not look very tree-like. We can fix that with the aid of Gorilla Glue. We're going to mist the tree with water, paint it with Gorilla Glue, then mist that again with water, and it'll develop a pretty nice bark-like skin. I'm using a little bit of it to uh, go in front of the, jo the arm joints so that that gets a little foamier than other spots. Uh, it'll puff up a little more than other spots. Help hide that arm joint. I don't necessarily want to glue them together because I want to be able to remove the arms just by snipping those zip ties. I want to note, I'm just doing the front three quarters of the tree. I'm leaving the back where the seam is. I'm not going to bother texturing it. Uh, if your haunt is 360, it's seen from all sides, then go ahead. Okay, so it's foaming up nicely. This is the first cup that I did. So remember how empty it was? And now it's that full of, uh, of foam. This has to dry and cure for like 30 minutes. So I'll come back to it. Let's paint this sucker. If you enjoy the content from this channel, or if this channel has helped you in any way, then please consider doing uh, one of the following things that help support the channel. As simple as liking or commenting on this video. Subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you get notifications. Or you might consider getting some Stilpy Studios merchandise from our Teespring, on, uh, in which link is in the video description. And there's probably an ad for it somewhere in the video. It's so. You could also consider supporting us on Patreon. Uh, Patreon allows us to do bigger, cooler projects. And uh, it's active throughout the year. Uh, Halloween is a very short amount of time. And that is when, obviously, I have the most views and get the most subscribers. Um, your support throughout the year means a lot to me, and I keep producing Halloween and even Christmas uh, Christmas content uh, for Christmas decorations. Uh, I'll be doing a lot more of that this year as we get closer to uh, the other holiday. Go make stuff! Now, I gotta wait on this to dry. I'm gonna paint this tree dry brush, but with spray paint. It means I'm gonna spray it onto the table that I have the plastic on. I'll spray it onto that, I'll pick it up with my paintbrush, and then I'll apply it.
I'm also not going for even coverage. I'm just kind of doing dashes all over, up and down. That was a charcoal gray. Now I'm gonna move on to a smoky beige. Now I have a color called warm caramel. Now I'm going with some espresso. Espresso. I'm back to my caramel and smoky beige, and I'm going to do a highlight around the mouth opening and around the eyes and the top of the head. Now, I got to put on his roots. So now I want to get a zip tie through here and through here. Uh, there is a trick to doing that. Take a zip tie, I put it in half, and I put it through. And now all that I have to do is get zip this zip tie to go through the other side. It goes through this loop and then I can pull the zip tie through. So now this zip tie is poking out on the right side for me. You could flip it over and very carefully zip tie it from the inside. Only that little band would be there, but not a big deal to me. So here are two spooky trees that I made. Uh, each one takes about three hours. Uh, the six foot size here is, let me do some quick math. These are just under $50, guys, to make one of these. Just under $50 to make a six-foot uh, spooky tree. And under 60, well, 60 bucks to make one that is nine foot tall. And I would do the exact same thing. I would just move it up a little bit and maybe have a little bit more above the head. These are six foot. So check out the tree textures that we got. If the inside of the foam bothers you, like seeing this diamond plate, just take another piece of this foam and put it on the inside with a, with a smooth side out right there behind the head. I live where it's windy. Okay, great. So instead of a gallon jug of water, which is what I put in these guys for weight, um, put a concrete bag down there and screw a, a four foot tall one by four to the side of that bucket. Just screw it in from the outside, let the screws poke to the inside, and you have a one by four in the back. And then you can zip tie the bucket in here. Remember, there's a bucket right here to help support the arms. Um, you can zip tie that uh, to that one by four that's running up the inside of it. You don't have to paint the inside of the mouth yellow. I just kind of like that. You might go for more menacing red. You might just leave it black and cavernous. Uh, that's pretty spooky too. Uh, but you have so many options with these trees. Remember that the bottom of this tree is a five gallon bucket. So if you want, you can put a fogger inside of it. You can put lights inside of it. Um, you can decorate your tree any way that you want once you make this base. You want to put vultures on the arms or crows? Do that. Um, you want to put a raccoon family or a squirrel skeleton inside of one's mouth? Great, do that. You want to have half a cat hanging out like it ate half a cat, ate a cat? Do that. Um, make these guys your own. So this is one of the trees uh, on my driveway.
spooky magical bucket. I took I took the bucket out of the bottom just so you could see the tree without anything. Yeah, see, painting the inside black is not a bad way to go either. That's a spooky tree. Here's my cat Jones. He's a little concerned by the tree. So we have a spooky tree. Look at that spooky tree. Go make stuff. This is Patreon. I thank you very much. Hello, Patreon supporters. Uh, that's them. That's their names going by. Thank you guys so much for everything you do for the channel and for keeping the shop in tools and toilet paper and all necessities. Um, I have actually some big plans for the Christmas holiday season, um, but you know that Halloween is our heart, and I hope that you guys are having a great one. I'm going to try and get some more videos out for you uh, in the next couple days. You guys are awesome. Thank you for helping me go make stuff. <laughs> and you can make this spooky tree and learn to scare away all the kids that just want your candy. Spooky.